Hi, everyone. Welcome to Grace for Today. I am Pastor Aaron Perdue here at Caris Christian Center in Colorado Springs. I'm with my dad, uh, Pastor Lawson Perdue. We're sharing on 1 John. If you have your Bibles, open them, them to 1 John. This is a powerful series we have going on. I actually um, preached on 1 John before, having a relationship with God. If you'd like to order this series, you can call us here at the ministry. We'd love to, to send it to you. So just call if you'd like to order that. We're going to be um, starting with the second part here today in 1 John chapter 2. So go ahead and open your Bibles there. We're going to start in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to verse 17. And I'm sure if you have been in the church for very long that you have heard these verses preached on. And I have a question for you. I teach this actually at Bible school or taught it actually for years at Bible school. But in 1 John 2, verse 15 to 17, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof but he that does the will of God abides forever. Now, when you look at this scripture, and I, I often will go to this and read it, and when I'm teaching Bible school, I ask, how many of you students have heard a message on this message, on these verses, 1 John 2, verse 15 to verse 17? And generally, about 50% of the, of the people that are there at Bible school have heard a message on the world, the flesh, and the devil, our enemies don't love the world. All that's in the world is less of the less the eye, pride of life. It's not of the world, but of the Father. Then, after I, I do that, I'll ask them, how many of you have heard it in the context of 1 John 2, verse 12 to verse 14? So we're going to go back and read verse 12 to verse 14. Now, generally, only about 1% have heard that verse preached in context. So say if there's a hundred people there, 50 of them will have heard a message on 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 verse to verse 17, the world, the flesh, and the devil are enemies, but only one of them out of the 50 that's heard that message preached, heard it preached in context with 1 John chapter 2, verse 12 to verse 14. So Aaron, go ahead and read 1 John 2, verse 12 to verse 14. It says, I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you little children because you have known the father. I have written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the, be the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So there are actually five things that are mentioned in 1 John chapter 2, verse 12 to verse 14. Number one, you're forgiven. Mm. Number two, you know God. That's talking about a relationship with God. Number three, you're strong. Number four, the word of God abides in you. And number five, you have overcome the wicked one. And you know what? If you know that you're forgiven, you have a relationship with God, you're strong. The Word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. It's not saying you can overcome. It's saying you have overcome. Mm -hmm. It's not saying you can be forgiven. It's saying you ha have been forgiven. It's not saying you, you, you can be strong. It's saying you are strong. So he's not talking about a future tense thing. He's talking about this is present day reality for the believer. And if you understand that you're forgiven, that you're strong, that you have overcome the wicked one, the Word of God abides in you and you have a, a vital, life-giving relationship with God, then the world, the flesh, and the devil are no problem. But if you teach people about the world, the flesh, and the devil, if you teach them about all the problems and all the difficulties without teaching them who they are and what they have in Christ, then it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've done in the church. Again, when I ask this question in Bible school, generally 50% of the people in Bible school have heard a message on 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to verse 17. But if there's 50 people there that have heard that message, and generally, you know, it's, now it's larger than that. So it's usually over a couple hundred people I'm teaching. So about 100, there'll be two out of 100. There'll be, you know, there'll be out of 200, 100 that have heard a message on 1 John 2, 15 to 17, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The problem but only two out of the hundred, only 2% have heard 
a message on who they are and what they have in Christ compared with the world, the flesh, and the devil. Mm -hmm. And if you understand who you are and what you have in Christ, if you understand you are forgiven, the Word of God abides in you, you have overcome the wicked one, you are strong, and, and you have a relationship with God, then the world, the flesh, and the devil is no match for it. But if you teach the world, the flesh, and the devil, and you don't teach people who they are and what they have, the world, the flesh, and the devil is a major problem. And it's not like it's not a problem because it was a problem in Genesis chapter 3 in the fall of man. It was a problem in Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus was tempted. Now, Jesus overcame the devil. And, and this we'll talk about this later in 1 John if we have time. But, you know, a lot of people think that the goal of Christianity is to overcome sin and overcome Satan. But the goal of Christianity is not to overcome sin and Satan. You see, the fact is sin had overcome you. You were already defeated. There was no way we could get free from it on our own. That's the whole Old Testament. So God sent Jesus and did for us what we could never do. Jesus overcame the devil. And the moment that you believe on Jesus, you are made a world overcomer in the spirit. That's awesome. Praise God. So you've got to begin to understand and look at this from the perspective of who you are in the spirit and what you have in Christ. That changes everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think sometimes uh, we have to be careful as believers too, just when you see the problems in the world today, like if your focus is on, on the problems, just on sin, on people's, you know, humanistic, you know, anti, <laughs> anti-God mentality, like it's gonna feel overwhelming, but if you put your focus on God, on His goodness, on His power, on His victory, um, Thank God. Yeah. Thank God we yeah. have hope in Christ. Yeah. You know, Paul says if we didn't have hope in Christ, we'd be of all men most miserable. Yeah. And thank God we have hope in Christ. Thank yeah. God our hope's not in the government. Thank God yeah. our hope's not in, you know, the financial system. Our hope's not in the markets. Our hope's not in people. Our hope is in God. Mm -hmm. Praise God, the resurrected Savior of the world, Jesus. We have yeah, a I relationship with Jesus. I don't know Jesus. how people live without Jesus, the hope Amen. that comes from Jesus. Uh, if your hope's in other things, just, Chances are you're going to be miserable. Um, so, so, so we're overcomers in Christ. Now he begins to talk about in verse 18 what we've overcome mm -hmm. and what we're dealing with. And he's talking about the spirit of Antichrist. And they were dealing with the spirit of Antichrist in the world in John's day. This was again about 90 AD, so about you know some 57 years after Jesus uh, was raised from the dead. They were, uh, you know, dealing with the spirit of Antichrist, and we're still dealing with the spirit of Antichrist 2,000 years after Jesus was raised from the dead. It's kind of neat, too. Um, John, you know, wrote this in 90 AD. You said that he wrote uh, Revelation uh, when 65 AD. Yeah. So, you know, obviously in Revelation, it talks about the Antichrist and his rising. So John knew about the Antichrist, you know, his, his you know, manifestation, full Man. on manifestation. But... You know, he talks about the Antichrist here in 90 AD and said, you know, there's actually a, a spirit of Antichrist. There's a lot of Antichrist going around right now who are letting that spirit come through them. And it's happening today in the world today. You know, um, even, a, and I, I don't care who you are, if you're a believer, you've seen, you've probably seen the spirit of Antichrist coming through it's people, through risen the world. Up different things. I don't care who you are, where you live you know, red state, blue state, Christian place, unchristian place. <laughs> I, you know, we, we, my parents started a church in Kit Carson, Colorado, a town of 300 people uh, in rural Eastern Colorado. Uh, you know, in that small town, probably 90% of the ca town was Christian. But um, I remember when I was in elementary school, like first or second grade, um, we had, you know, in, in, a, in a very small town, conservative, pretty Christian place. But uh, I, I think it was, first grade, second grade, sometime around then, we had um, uh, a period in the day at school where our class, we had silent reading and we could bring our own book, pick your own book to read during silent reading. And um, I, I chose the Bible. I was gonna read the Bible for my own personal choice and you know what to read during silent reading. And my teacher said, well, you can't read the Bible. That's crazy. And uh, you know, just in this small, conservative, pretty Christian town, you know, what, what was happening was the spirit of Antichrist was coming through that teacher. And, um, you know, I, I just remember as a, you know, seven-year-old, eight-year-old, I was thinking, well, you're going to have to pry this thing from my cold, dead hands. If, <laughs> you know, you said we could read whatever we wanted, and I'm reading the Bible, and, and I, I stood up to that teacher. I said, this Praise is God. what I'm going to read. And, 
Um, I think my parents might have gotten involved and talked to the principal, but I, I kept reading my Bible. Um, Praise God. So there, there is a spirit of Antichrist out there. I don't care who you are, where you live, what country you live in. I mean, and Kit Carson, again, is super conservative. Mm -hmm. Great school. You, all you boys went there, got a great foundation educationally, academically. Um, the teachers as a whole are Catholics and Christians, and they teach. You know, they won't teach things like evolution as a whole. They, they, you know, as a whole, I mean, it is a very godly community. There's mm -hmm. great things happen, but even there, we had a superintendent come, and I think he was one of two atheists in town, and he tried to take prayer out of the school, and, you know, I got my church board involved, and they, they went to and talked to all the school board members and gave them at that time legal information about why prayer could be allowed in school. And then I went to the board meeting. I talked to all the other pastors in town, the pastor of the Methodist Church, Lutheran Church, and Catholic Church. And I went there to the board meeting, and um, we had a, a Catholic teacher and Luther teacher that came, and they said, yeah, this superintendent said we can't pray and we can't do this. And and you know, and I said, well, there's a, a, you know, those of us who say you can. And the president of the school board said, he's a good Methodist man. He said, I don't have a problem with that. And you know, we ran that superintendent out of town, and we got a new superintendent. Mm -hmm. He was a born again Catholic, great man of God. He would quote James Dobson in the school newsletter. Mm -hmm. Kit Carson was more Christian than most Christian schools. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but a lot of times Christians don't get involved. And that's why, you know, we let we let places go to the devil because well, we don't stand up for what sometimes our sometimes Christians just look at the world. They put their focus on the world and, and the problems there. But you have to remember that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I've been in some very anti-Christian environments, but I've always had that mindset that God surrounds me with favor. I am his, I'm his favored son. He protects me. His favor surrounds me like a shield. He protects me on every side. You know, though, though 10,000 may come against me, you know, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So that's, that's the mentality that I've had. And, um, you know, we, we are world overcomers. Praise God. So he goes on and talks about the spirit of Antichrist. And he says, little children, it's the last time. First John 2, 18, as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many, many Antichrists, whereby we know it's the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they'd been of us, they would have no doubt continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Mm -hmm. What he's saying, the way you deal with the spirit of Antichrist in the world is through the anointing of the Spirit of God that's on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. You have an unction. You have an anointing from the Holy One. You don't have to have me teach you or Aaron teach you or you know, somebody else teach you all these things about you know, the Antichrist or spirit of Antichrist. You, you know on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know what's right and wrong. I know there used to be some things on Christian television and you boys would look at it and say, we don't like this. It's like rubbing the hair on a cat backwards, mm -hmm. you know, because it didn't flow with your spirit. Mm -hmm. And I know some of those same Christian television stations are going a very ungodly way. Mm -hmm. I know there's one major network that wouldn't even let my good friend Andrew Womack run his shows before the election. And if you look at some of these things, you know, in one party, they're anti-Christ. They've taken the statement, you know, one nation under God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. That is anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we need people to stand up. We need Christians to go to the polls and vote. And, you know, we need Christians to be who they are. But, you know, you don't have to have me teach you, Aaron teach you, Andrew Womack teach you or somebody else. You can know by the spirit on the inside of you. Mm -hmm what's right and wrong, mm -hmm. and, and you know what's not coming from God. And he says, I have not written unto you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Hmm. He says, I'm writing you, and basically, I'm confirming the truth that you already know. And he writes them, he makes this statement, I love this, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, he says, These things I've written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son mm -hmm. of God. I'm writing to believers that you can know what you have and continue to believe. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of saying the same thing here. I'm not writing to you as unbelievers, I'm writing to you believers. So you can get strong in what you believe, mm -hmm. praise God. Whoever, he goes on and says this in verse 22, 22, he says, who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ, 
He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Mm -hmm. Man, if you deny Jesus, you're denying the Father. But if you acknowledge Jesus, you acknowledge the Father. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You can't, you can't take one and not the other. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't know Jesus, you don't know God, mm -hmm. the one true God. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus said, you know, whoever's seen me has seen the Father. Mm -hmm. And if you deny Jesus, you're denying the Father. Mm -hmm. You're denying God. And you know, some people today will talk about God, but they won't talk about Jesus because that's not popular. But Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And you, we should not be ashamed of the name of Jesus, to mm -hmm. stand up for Jesus. Yeah. He says this in verse 24, he says, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If you have, if that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, sh you shall remain in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us even eternal life. Mm -hmm. So we have an anointing. It's an anointing of truth and it's an anointing of life. Mm -hmm. And because of the anointing that's in us, we don't have to fear the spirit of Antichrist that is in the world. Mm -hmm. Greater is he that's in us. And he's talking about that same thing in 1 John 4, verse 4, the spirit of Antichrist in the world. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Mm -hmm. So the, the spirit of Antichrist in th this world is no match mm -hmm. for the true Christ that lives on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about 1 John 2, 25 for a minute. This is the promise that he promised us, even eternal life. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's one of the greatest promises, if not the greatest promise mm -hmm. in all the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Because we've got the life, we've got the nature of Jesus Christ in us. We've got the very character of God in us. And if you know what you have on the inside, again, the devil is no match for Jesus on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a Bible full of promises, but probably the greatest promise that we have as believers is eternal life, which comes from knowing God. It comes from knowing Jesus. Yeah. So, it, and, and God wants to be known. Jesus wants to be known. He wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to manifest himself to you. You know, Jesus manifested himself to John. Jesus wants to manifest himself to you. You know, God would do anything to save you. He would do anything to... to have you with him in Amen. heaven for all eternity. He Amen. wants to give you eternal life. Amen. You know, I remember one time years ago when we were pastoring Kit Carson, we had a woman coming from Cheyenne Wells uh, and she was bringing her children to church, but her husband was a drug addict and he worked in the oil fields. He had major problem with hard drugs. Mm -hmm. And I went to him and he said, well, I don't know that there's a God, I don't, you know. And he was denying, you know, what the Bible says that every creator knows, that, created being knows it's creator. But, I asked him if he would let me pray for him and, and if he would pray with me that if there was a God, that God would reveal himself to him and he let me pray with him. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This is what happened. That guy got caught with drugs at work and you know, most people would have fired him on the spot, mm -hmm. but they sent him to a clinic where he got, you know, off drugs and got delivered and God, he came to know God. He got through that whole thing, he mm -hmm. got saved. Praise mm -hmm. God. And you know what? If you'll give God an inch, he'll take a mile. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you'll just give him a little place in your life, if you'll just pray, like, like Aaron said, God wants you to know him. He wants you to know him so much he sent Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the promise he's promised us, even eternal life. What is eternal life? John 17, verse three says, this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Mm -hmm. And that's not talking about a head knowledge. It's not talking about knowing about God. That's talking about a, re a relationship, a personal intimate relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about this girl that recently just came and got saved at our youth. And then the next week came and, you know, had the youth leaders go out with her and get the drugs and flush them down the toilet. We, nobody preached and told her that, but it was her spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to preach on you shall not, you shall not, you shall not. And you know, people just keep on sinning. Mm -hmm. But you start getting them to know God. You know, I had a woman come to me one time and she was living with somebody and she said, what should, what should I do? And you know, the Bible says you shall not commit adultery. The Bible's mm -hmm. plain about it. I'm sure she knew, knew that, but I, did, I didn't harp on that. Mm -hmm. I just said, what do you think you should do? Won't you pray and ask God? And you know, she's like, I need to break this relationship off. Mm -hmm. And you know, she broke it off and they separated. And later that uh, her and this man she was living with ended up getting married. They later came back to church. 
and you know, told me, hey, we're married, we love God, we're serving God. Mm -hmm. We're doing what the Bible says, praise mm -hmm. God. You know, so people can know God, the Holy Spirit will teach. Hebrews talks about this, that in that day, you'll not have someone tell you, you don't do this and you do that, yes and no, but you'll know me from the inside. Mm -hmm. I'll write my laws in your heart and you'll know me from the inside. And that's, mm -hmm. this is talking about knowing God. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's talking here about overcoming the sp spirit of Antichrist. How do we do that? Through a relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Kenneth E. Hagin used to say this. He used to say, you know, people when they first get saved, there's an anointing on them and, and that anointing protects them from the spirit of Antichrist and different things. But when they grow, if they don't pay attention, they get led more by their brain mm -hmm. And I've seen people who are mature Christians make major mistakes because they're, they fail to, to rely on their relationship with God and they get more operating by their intellect than by their spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we gotta walk by the spirit. And so he says, I've written these things to you concerning those who seduce you. In verse 27, he says, but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. And you don't need that any man teach you, but the same anointing teaches you all things in his truth and is no lie and has taught you, you shall abide in him. Hmm. The anointing will show you the spirit of Antichrist. The anointing will protect you. The anointing mm -hmm. will keep you out of bad relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, I know when you boys were little one time, mom and I were going to visit these people in another town and they wanted us to bring you boys and something, mom had a dream about it and something said, don't bring your boys and we hired a babysitter and we went to that other town and visited that family and we left you boys home. They said, oh, where are your boys? And we said, oh, we left them home. We got a babysitter. But it was God protecting us. And I know ministers who've had their kids molested by homosexuals, molested by, you know, terrible, terrible things have happened. Mm -hmm. But you got to listen to the Holy Spirit that's, and the Holy Spirit in you will protect you from a lot of these different things that are in the world. Yeah. Yeah, and you need to listen to that spirit in you. If you believe on Jesus, he, he places his spirit in you. And, and like the Bible says, that, that anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true. You know, if you're a believer, if you, if you have questions about what's right, what's wrong, listen to, to Jesus. Look at the word of God. His, that voice always lines up with the word of God. You need to follow the word of God. But, uh, you know, God doesn't want you to be blind. He doesn't want you to stumble through life wondering what's right, what's wrong. He wants to show you what's, what's right, the right path, um, just lead you. He, he illuminates the right path for you. He gives you direction. But um, you need to listen to that, that voice inside you, that voice from the Holy Spirit, that voice from Jesus. He'll lead you into all truth. Yeah, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. You know, the Bible actually says that in Romans 8, 14, mm -hmm. as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about mortifying right before that, the deeds of the body through the spirit. Yeah. You let the spirit lead you and the spirit will help you overcome the challenges and difficulties that you face in the flesh, in the mm -hmm. physical man. Well, you need to be careful who you're letting lead you as well, like what influences you're allowing to lead you. Maybe a yeah. political leader, maybe a I was, professors. I, don't, I was just listen. thinking, I was just thinking about, you know, I went to school for a long time, bachelor's, master's, doctorate in music. And I was just thinking, you know, a lot of people talk about diversities. These universities I went to had, um, you know, um, boards of diversity trying to promote diversity in the university. But I don't think I had a single um, Republican Christian professor in 11 years of college. That's crazy. I don't, you know, w which is pretty wild. And I was thinking about our church. You know, we have a, you know, a, a black worship pastor, a, a Hispanic youth leader. I was thinking, you know, we don't even try to. We just try to get the people that God's called and God, to be here the, with the us. The kingdom of Christ is, is diverse. Anyone who calls on the name of Jesus is saved. You know, and I was just thinking how, how non-diverse you know, most universities are in the U.S. today. I, don't, I can't remember a single Republican Christ, Christ. Christian You know, they found, they found out some of these major universities and they're starting to investigate them. Mm -hmm. Some of these major universities in the U.S. have been taking donations from China. They've been taking donations from the Middle East, mm -hmm. and and they're having you know them as a as a reward for these big donations they're taking. Put in these teachers that teach socialism and communism, and so they're trying to destroy us from the inside. And pro-Islam as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm believing God that this stuff is found out, and we put a stop to that nonsense. Mm -hmm and you know, keep our nation built strong on what it was founded to be. Mm -hmm. And 
So, you know, there's a spirit of Antichrist in the world. Now, I don't live in fear. No. And I didn't teach you guys to work, live in fear no. over that. You know, I didn't keep you out of these secular universities. I'll let you guys go. To, but you had a good relationship with God. You had a good understanding of who you were in Christ. And you all three went to secular universities to study, to develop your gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. And none of you lost your relationship with God. None of you turned your back on God. None of you lost your faith. In fact, I heard this statement one time that 90% of students that go to these secular colleges lose their faith. There ain't no 90% and nobody loses their faith. They never had faith. Mm -hmm. They never truly knew God mm -hmm. from the inside. And so he says, little children, abide in him and when he shall appear we we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him it is coming if you know that he is righteous you know that everyone who does righteousness is born of him mm. praise god That's awesome. jesus is righteous and we're made righteous in jesus thank you so much for being on the broadcast today again we're teaching from aaron's series uh, our relationship with God, the book of 1 John. If you want to get that serious, you can give our prayer ministers a call. If you need prayer, if you need to receive Jesus, if you need to deliverance, mm -hmm. God will deliver you, God will help you. Mm -hmm. Just call in, people will pray for you, and you can see the power of God manifest mm -hmm. in your life. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. You know, we're celebrating the fact that God gave His Son, praise God, mm -hmm. and we have received the love of God, and that has changed our life. Mm -hmm. And you know what? God is no respecter of persons. He's only respecter of faith. And if he'll do it for us, he'll do it for you. Amen. And so if you've never received Jesus, give us a call. If you need prayer, give us a call. We're here. We have prayer ministers that are here to minister to you. God bless you. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Go to www.lawsonpadu.com or write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.